What's going on? Will Stewart with Doomsday Tackle Company here for um, another episode of In the Office. Um, today, what we're going to be doing is uh, kind of an Ask Doomsday. So this is just going to be, you know, a Q&A that um, from questions that were posted on on social media and stuff like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So the first question is, is um, Will, what's the difference between the Doomsday Turtle and the bombshell turtle sold at Bass Pro? Well, this is a kind of a story that we, or a question that we get asked a lot, and uh, the answer is, is uh, basically, um, before Doomsday Tackle Company existed, um, we had the shape, the, uh, the turtle shape. And we licensed that out to um, a different company in the past, and so that's the original bombshell turtle. Um, after that licensing ran out, we took that shape back and we decided to start our own company um, and do more shapes um, besides the turtle. Um, so we took the shape back, we own the patent on that turtle shape. Um, and so if you look at the newer do or bombshell uh, turtle, you'll see that it's much different. So basically when we brought that back and decided to launch it under the new brand Doomsday Tackle Company, we made some improvements, um, changed a couple of the features, uh, improved the action. Um, and so what's the difference between the two? Um, a lot really. The, the, the Doomsday Turtle has, um, in my opinion, a lot better action, has a more uh, round, flat profile, whereas the newer Bombshell Turtle is kind of more, um, you know, just kind of your regular, um, um, you know, paddle tail shape. It's more, more narrow. It's not round. Um, the tail or the legs on, on, on the Bombshell Turtle are are switched around the other way so there's quite a few differences so in, in my personal opinion um, I, I believe that the doomsday turtle performs better um, a little bit more durable um, stuff like that so that's the difference on that um, next question is um, why did you pick the names Reaper or um, Roku for the two new shapes well what that comes from is, um, so the Doomsday Reaper. In my opinion, that particular type of fishing and that type of bait is, it's the Green Reaper for bass, right? So it literally just is downright deadly. So for me, it was kind of, it kind of has been code word, the secret um, weapon here in the office. And so for me, it was kind of like, you know, secret weapon is a little bit this or that so what's something that kind of has the same meaning and, and it's the reaper so it's something that I use to when I, when I need to catch a limited bass really quick you know that's the bait that I go to is the the doomsday reaper on a little finesse jig and then the Roku um, I don't know if you guys know or not but um, you know my history in the industry is is designing baits for the Japanese domestic market or JDN um, so um, I spent you know, 10 plus years in Asia, um, not all of that in the fishing industry, but a, a good chunk of that, but about five years, um, whether it was fishing um, as a angler or working for a company. Um, and so the Roku, it just basically means six in Japanese. And since it's a, um, you know, kind of a Cinco style, six sided um, finesse worm, I felt that, you know, Roku sounds kind of cool. and. And it, it means six-sided, so that's that's why that name has that bit has that name. Um, next question here is why should people choose Doomsday over the everyday brands like Berkeley and Bass Pro, and what's the Doomsday advantage? Um, well, I mean, you know, Berkeley and, and Bass Pro and all those other brands are great brands. Um, the difference is, you know, when you're at that large of a scale or you've been around for that long. Um, you, you tend to lose sight of a lot of the, um, I guess you'd say the the details in what you're doing, right? Um, a smaller company has has more time to um, pay attention to to details, to quality, and stuff like that. So, what, my biggest thing and what I feel that Doomsday, um, what sets Doomsday apart from. Um, your average American brand is that you know Doomsday Tackle Company's products um, are designed with um, a, you know a JDM feel 
fishability, styling, um, and then quality, but at, at a much better price. So, you know, everybody wants to fish, you know, the big mega bass or, or you know, Evergreen or, you know, OSP, the different, you know, high-end Japanese brand soft baits, but um, not a lot of people are willing to, to spend, you know, 12 to $13 for a bag of six or eight baits. Um, so basically with, you know, with my history and with my history of designing baits for that market, um, I can take those, the knowledge that I learned there, design baits that are um, just as effective, if not more, and give them to you at a regular American price. So, um, you know, you get the same piece counts as you would in a Japanese bag, but instead of paying $12, you're only paying 6 So, I mean, that's really what sets it apart. So, it's attention to detail, you know, flash, the excess, you know, plastic that gets um, extruded out the sides of the mold when it's shot, um, you know, putting all the bag, putting all the baits in a bag with a tray. And what that does is it keeps the baits straight, you know, you don't get curled and warped. You know, how many times you go buy a bag of baits that has, you know, eight baits in it, eight baits in it have curly tails and you have to either put them in hot water or, or do something to get them normal so that you, that, that you can use them. Well, all of our baits are, you know, all of our baits come trade in the bag. So that means that every, you know, piece that you pull out um, is ready to fish right out of the package. So, I mean, that's the main thing that kind of separates the difference between um, Doomsday Tackle Company and your everyday brands. So, the last question that we've got for today's episode is, can we expect any more different style baits from Doomsday like uh, the, the turtle that other companies don't have? Absolutely. So, um, we've got one coming out right now. I mean, all of our shapes are original. Um, we've got one coming out called the Lag and Dragon that'll be be out later this um, year. And the, while there are shapes that, that are similar in, I guess you could say, aesthetics to this particular shape, its functionality and how it's fished is completely unique. Um, also, later this um, at the end of the summer, um, you know, probably um, around August time frame, we're going to be coming out with a. Um, some really cool stuff that that you you've never seen before um and then in the future too i mean it's kind of you know my goal as a lure designer is basically to fix problems that anglers have so i mean i don't i don't want to completely reinvent the wheel but what i want to do is i want to take you know these style of baits have these you know downsides or or restrictions and try to overcome those with some new innovative um, products, thinking outside the box and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't want to make this a, a super long video. It's already probably the longest video that we've made. But, um, you know, just go ahead and make sure that you subscribe to our channel, um, share the video with your friends, like it if you like it. Check out our other uh, social media stuff Facebook, uh, Instagram. Instagram is probably the one that we keep uh, most up to date um, simply for the fact that it's, it's just easier to do. Um, so go ahead and check those things out and remember fish to the end. <laughs>